Those who know me know that I'm a big fan of encouraging people to play in groups rather than solo queue. I think that's how comp will be saved, not really a roll queue system. Solo queue will always be chaotic and that's just the way it is. However, there isn't much incentive for players to group up with six people in comp. Because if you don't go against another six stack, then the game finds higher ranking players for you to go against. And I'm sure we have all had the experience of grouping up with friends or even strangers that you had a good game with and decided to use that stay as team feature only to regret it the next match because you got stomped. So most of the time people form two or three man groups so you get some coordination in your games and don't have to worry about going against a six stack. It's sad though because six stacking is likely the best experience you will ever have in Overwatch. You're not fighting against the matchmaking system trying to see how to work around a random player who doesn't want to switch or a team that doesn't want to work together. But six stacking is really tough because it can feel like the same disorganization you get from solo queue except it's more frustrating because you know it should be more coordinated than with a team of randoms. So what if I told you with just a few simple steps that anyone can implement, you can not only make your six stacks work well, but be able to go on huge win streaks with players that you only just met that day and don't need to have played together for months just to have any synergy. That's what I'm going to share with you today so that you can form synergy with nearly any group you find yourself in and secure wins easily. First, before you even enter a game, you have to discuss roles. Yes, I know, you are good at everyone and are the ultimate flex player, but it's actually extremely rare for players to be able to play more than, say, five heroes at a masterful level. And those rare cases are mostly the pro players. Each hero has many nuances to them that take time, experience, and consistency to play them at such a high level. So yes, you can play all the heroes, but you need to decide on the one role you are best with. Tank, support, or DPS. Everyone in your group should do this. If you happen to have three DPS mains that don't know how to play anything else, then you're either going to run triple DPS comps all day or are going to have to find another player. That's why it's good to main just two roles, but that's for another video. The main reason you have to decide on who's going to play which role is because you can't have your tank player switch mid-match to a DPS without telling anyone. If there are any switches that need to be made on the fly and you don't have time to discuss it, then it should be within the role that the person is already playing. A big switch from, say, a support to DPS really needs to be discussed with the team ahead of time. Once you have roles, the next tip is probably the most important one that should not be neglected. However, it's not the last tip because that one backs up this one I'm about to share. And that is you need to designate a shot caller and a target caller. Sometimes one person could do both and that's fine, but usually the main tank is the target caller and support is the shot caller. DPS players can do these jobs too, but it's pretty difficult and the idea is to make things easier for your six stack. But really, anyone who is the most comfortable can do these jobs from any role. So to explain quickly, the target caller's job is to call the initial target when you first engage in a fight and during the mid fight when there's too many targets and none of them are low on health. The target caller brings focus to a chaotic fight. The only thing that may supersede the target caller's call out is an enemy who is low on health that they may not have seen or a flanker that's about to take out your back line. Now the shot caller's job is mostly to keep track of man advantage and ult economy. Again, it's difficult for DPS to do this because they have to constantly watch the kill feed and keep track of ultimates, and that takes away from their ability to aim and fight properly. But it's not impossible at all for them to do this job. So the shot caller keeps track of man advantage and calls out whether to stay in the fight or to pull back and regroup. Also, they are in charge of forming a plan with ultimates so that you don't use them all in one fight figuring out which ultimates combo and which ones to hold onto for the following fight. They also should try to keep track of the enemy's ultimates and how your team can counter it. If you are not the target caller or the shot caller, then what you do is call out enemies who are very low on health and anyone who is trying to flank. Normally these callouts supersede what your target caller says, but it really depends on the situation. Now just because you are the shot caller or target caller doesn't mean you're the boss and that you get to micromanage your group. You are there to help encourage synergy, so understand that anyone can do your job. Understand that your team can also help form a plan with ultimates or give their opinion on who they think should be the main target your team should be focusing on. These things are usually discussed before you engage in a fight though, and not during. The last tip sort of goes with what I said already, but should not be taken lightly. And that is to always have a plan before a fight. It may sound obvious, but you'd be surprised how many groups simply do the poke battle with no real goal or win condition in mind and just hope something happens. 
This is a bad way to approach any match, whether it's in a six stack or solo queue. Never play a match blindly and always think about what the enemy might do and what your team is able to do and have a plan. It doesn't even have to be complicated. For example, I was in a six stack recently on Hanamura going against another six stack. We are on attack running dive comp. When we approached the choke point, the enemy had either a Rhine or a Risa, I can't remember, with a Bastion. My team considered switching from dive. Because in solo queue, that's what you do. You simply switch and don't bother trying to coordinate attack with your team. But we decided, no, we'll simply dive the Bastion at the same time. I was running the Winston, so we located the Bastion and I said, okay, Bastion is on the back right by the rock. I'm diving him in three, two, one. And as I went in, my D.Va held her matrix and the DPS were able to follow us exactly where we were going because we called out his location. Which is a very important tip, by the way, whenever you call out a target. And Bastion went down in less than a second. It didn't require some crazy skill with a hero to pull it off. In fact, my Winston is pretty average. It just took a few simple tips on how to create synergy with your team even if you haven't played with them before. So those are my three tips on how to make any six stack work. I hope this helps and you'll find out for yourself that not only are your matches so much better than solo queue could ever offer, but you can secure wins back to back feeling like you didn't do that much compared to how hard you have to work in solo queue. If you are having trouble finding people to make your own six stack, please join our Team Reflect Discord, link in the description. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.